In today's video, we will be cash stuffing my sinking funds and my spending money. We're going to check in on my no spend days and see if I have had any impulse purchases this week. And I'm going to be answering three of your questions, two of which are my most commonly asked questions. So I'm actually going to tell you right now what the three questions are, because even though they don't sound like they could or would have anything to do with the other's answer, they do actually all relate and have the same answer. Question number one, will you explain why you have four separate binders? Question two, what do you do if you get paid twice a month, but your partner gets paid weekly? And question three, how do I get ahead and save money, but still pay my bills on time? These are extremely common questions. I get all three of these, or at least some version of them in the comment section of almost every single video. So let's start with number one. Why do I have four separate binders? Now, at first I was like, huh? And my knee jerk reaction was a very literal answer. And I thought, well, because all of my envelopes won't fit in just one binder. But then this question did make me think back to when I first started cash stuffing. And no, I did not have four separate binders. And that was so I could get used to the change of using cash and setting spending limits in certain categories. And that sounds easy enough, right? Just go take cash out of the bank and set some limits for yourself on some spending categories. Well, I don't think it's as easy as it sounds. And that's why we see questions like number two and number three the most. Because when it's time to go to the bank, what's the first thing we ask? How much am I supposed to take out? Where do I put it? How do I know what amount goes where? Now all of these natural questions come up about your specific income and your personal bills. What about my specific pay period? And how do I put cash into savings and still pay my bills? Interestingly enough, after thinking about these three questions over the last few days, as I said, I realized they all have the same answer. The answer is you have to go through your own process. I know. I think that you were expecting something totally mind blowing and maybe even something that would take you off the hook just a little, right? Nope. Just a process and you have to do all of it. I went through mine. Now let's get you through yours. Now I am going to cash stuff while we talk about this, but we are going to get the steps of this process out on the table once and for all. Okay, so when you first decided that you wanted to do this, I can guarantee you thought to yourself, I have got to start saving money, right? Or you thought, I've got to stop spending money, or both, right? It's the same thing. We've got to stop spending and we've got to start saving. And I know this because that's what started this whole thing for me. I just knew the answer was start saving, stop spending. Before we talk about whose pay period comes in when and what it's paying for or how we're going to get ahead on bills or even just having one binder, we have got to start saving and stop spending. So what I did was I went ahead and printed out my bank statement. Yes, my 20 page bank statement. And as I looked through it, I thought to myself, this is 30 days of activity. Oh my God. I can't even decipher what all of these transactions are. Oh my God, you guys. So what do I do after that? I write down and I take a really good look at my huge debt. Yes, that was super fun. And of course I start asking myself, what did we even put on this $20,000 credit card? How about this $10,000 one? 
Okay, maybe this $3,000 one. Can you remember what that was? No, no clue. I can't remember. These cards had been maxed out for so long that I didn't even know what we bought. So smart. So yes, that thought of stop spending and start saving goes through my head again at this point. I was so overwhelmed after looking at that bank statement and looking at all of my debt. I had to go back to that basic thought, start saving, stop spending, right? So what do I do? <laughs> I put that into Google, saving money, stop spending, what do I do? And you guys, some of you might already know what pops up. Yes, a no spend challenge and how to do one. So I decide at this point that I am going to do the most extreme no spend challenge I could think of and I committed to a full 30 days. Now I do have an older video from when we first started the channel where I talk about this in detail. You guys, I was using up what I already had, finding alternatives for things that I didn't have. I was just going without completely. I was making coffee, packing lunches, planning dinners, learning to say no to myself and other people, finding new ways to entertain myself that didn't cost a dime. I stopped spending and guess what? I had also started saving. That money was building up little by little in my checking account. Each paycheck was stretching just a little bit further. Bills, groceries, and my absolute necessities were the only things going out at this point and I could really see the difference. Okay, so this brings me back to the question of getting ahead and still paying those bills on time. When someone asks me a question like this, as much as I'd like to, I can't really answer it for them because I would actually have to see your entire budget written down I'd have to know all of your numbers. And you have to keep in mind that even if a financial advisor does see all of your numbers and gives you some direction, you still have to do the work. And this is where actually being in the process is going to help you see the answer to this question all on your own. Because once you have cut out the extra fat, the mindless spending, the $5 here and the $20 there for 30 full days, and you have only paid bills for that month, and you've purchased only your absolute necessities, you will now see clearly where you really are financially, or at least you will have a heck of a lot better idea than you did before. So for me, since I had committed to only spending on what I absolutely needed and nothing else, when I printed out my bank statement after that 30 days were up, oh my goodness, you guys, this bank statement had a whole new look. It was so cleaned up and I could finally see what really should be going in and out every month. So now at this point, this is where we will also know whether we have an income problem, a spending problem, or maybe even both. And if you think that that might be you, I do have this video behind on bills that can help. I have another video on clearing out your house and selling things online and in person. I have a paycheck to paycheck series. It's three parts and any of those may be able to help you get started with some new ideas. Okay, so where are we at now in the process? Let's recap. We have 
your original bank statement, you've looked it over, right? You wrote down all of your debt, yikes. <laughs> Once you saw those two things, you realized, okay, I've got to stop spending. I've got to start saving. Let's do a true extreme no spend for 30 days. Not a weekend, not seven days, 30 full days. Okay, now you did that. Your next step is to print out that new version of your bank statement and bask in all of its glory because now looking at your new bank statement, you'll have a better understanding of your actual financial situation. It won't be bogged down and confusing you with all of these extra purchases. Okay, so now what? Okay, now this is where I personally was so thrilled with my results and my bank account after 30 days of that strict no spend that I did another 30 days. Okay, okay, you don't have to do another 30, even though I actually highly recommend just living that way until all of your debt is paid off. And I'm speaking from experience. In fact, let's take a look at this. What is this? This is my no spend 2024 calendar and tracker. Now I have as you can see, continue to do a no spend. I try not to make any impulse buys. My rules are if it is not budgeted already or planned out, that counts as an impulse buy, a spend day. So let's check in and see if I had any impulse buys this week. Okay, so the last time I checked in with you guys was on July 28th. Today is August 9th and I have had not one spend day in that time. Now, if you are new to the channel, I am completely debt free, except for our house that we just bought. And that's a whole other story, a whole other video. <laughs> we have paid off almost $100,000 in credit card debt, around 98,000 to be exact. We got rid of expensive vehicles. We've sold two RVs. And in the end, over 300,000 of consumer debt is now gone. Now, believe me, there were quite a few hiccups in there, but we made it and it all started with this, the no spend. The ideas of the no spend have obviously stuck with me. I continue to challenge myself with this and I ask myself things like, do you really need this? Do you know where you're gonna put it? Do you have anything else you can use? Can this wait? And the answers are usually the same. I'd rather keep my money and have a no spend day than have whatever that item is that I'm looking at. So let's get back to our process and our three questions, because now without all of those debit card swipes and all of those online shopping dings, again, you have that better understanding of your finances. And no, the numbers are not gonna be perfect, but you are definitely on the right track. The super strict no spend challenge has done its job. So now maybe you feel comfortable loosening your belt a little bit. I know I did. And then what's the next step after that? The next step in the process after you've completed your 30 day challenge is to commit to tracking your spending moving forward. Hey, it's not easy. I know that. And I said before, you still have to do the work. I have mentioned before in a lot of videos that I actually call this working for myself. Because let me tell you guys, no hourly rate or coupon code, certainly no cash back app is going to pay me as much as what this process has and continues to do. So trust me, this will all be worth it. So what are you going to do? You are going to get a spiral notebook and you are going to start writing down all of your spending. Now, most of us, of course, we use a debit card for our spending. So what you can do is check your bank statement online, your account every couple days, and at least look it over 
But I'm gonna be honest here in saying that I do still suggest that you write it down. Why? This is a really good answer, you guys, <laughs> because it makes you think about every purchase for that minute that you're writing it down, right? And I personally, I would know right away if I could have done without that item or maybe I can get it cheaper or next time I would just say no altogether or sometimes writing those purchases down went the other way and I would think to myself, that was so worth it or gosh, what a great time I had or yeah, I really needed that. You are going to start to see your weak spots and get to hone in on your strengths at the same time. And guess what, you guys? Tracking our spending is how I knew where to start with my cash envelopes. It was finally time to start putting my money where it should be. Now, tracking told me right away that I was spending way too much on my groceries. In fact, we were wasting so much food. We were eating out way too much. Jason was stopping at gas stations and spending a lot during a work day. And I was just too quick to buy anything and everything on Amazon. So those were very apparent to me right off the bat, right in the beginning. So I started with that one binder and a few categories. And you'll do the same. As you go through your own process, you are going to start to prioritize your fund. You'll start new envelopes. You'll fund them. You'll start more. You'll complete goals. You might stick with just one binder. You might want to add more. You're going to answer your own questions on how many binders should I have? What categories should I start with? How much goes in each envelope? Because you are going through your own process. Okay, and now let's get to that question about different pay periods. And this is where the budget and a monthly calendar are going to come in. So let's finish out this binder. We've got one more. Now I do have Dave Ramsey's detailed budget sheet in the description below. You can print this to guide you through. They don't miss a thing in that budget sheet. Everything is there for you. And this is my suggestion. Now that the two of you, you and your partner, have gone through this process that we just talked about, right? You've curbed your spending, you're tracking your expenses. Now when you come together to do your budget, it's gonna go a lot smoother and it'll be a lot less stressful. I mean, come on guys, could you imagine trying to get through every drive through stop, every coffee, every Amazon purchase together with your partner to try and make a budget that's gonna work? No, it's just gonna confuse the whole thing. So do the steps that we just talked about first because you're gonna need that clean start. Then do the budget. And I want you guys to keep this in mind. Everyone's numbers are different. Income, bills, it's all different. But the principle of taking your income and subtracting your expenses and your bills is the same for everyone. You can have one income, you can have four. You can get paid daily, weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, annually. It doesn't matter because we are all working from the same calendar. The same amount of days are in that month. So what you're going to do is you're going to write down your bills when they're due on your calendar and you're gonna write down your paydays and the amounts that you are getting from the paydays. Now, obviously your income needs to be higher than your bills. If it isn't, you're gonna need to get another job or a higher paying job. If that's not possible, you have to find ways to cut your bills. Those are the only things that you can do. Make more, spend less, or a combo of both. Now, this is typically <laughs> where the naysayers come in, right? Oh, it's not that easy. I've been trying to find another job. There's no jobs in my area. Now I want you to stop that. 
First of all, stop it. I want you to think about what you can do, not what you can't do. Because if you consistently listen to someone who is negative, including yourself, guess what? You're going to start to believe it. So don't do that anymore. If you do make enough, but your due dates are an issue, maybe your car payment is coming out of the same pay that you need for rent. Not everybody knows this, but you can change your car payment due date. Some let you change it online yourself, some you have to call. Even utilities allow this, your electric, your water, your cell phone. If a bigger bill is interfering with another large bill and it's cutting you down to a really low amount until you get your next paycheck, just call and see if you can change due dates around so that it works for you and you won't be struggling. So again, just add up the income, subtract the expenses and the bills, just do the math. I personally have multiple incomes and they all vary. I do this budget sheet every six days, no matter when my paychecks come in. There are just too many variables in everybody's situation for someone like me to be able to say exactly what's gonna work for you. Some people do all the money in one pot. Some people half the bills. Some people are responsible for certain ones. I mean, there's just too many variables. So just remember that the steps themselves aren't difficult. Starting them is the hardest part. So my best advice to another person that has multiple paychecks from multiple people coming in is to just check in with yourself and each other at least once a week. Add up what your income is, minus your expenses together, minus those bills that you have to pay before your next paycheck comes in. And if you both continue the steps together, the ability to save and get a month ahead could be a goal for the two of you. Starting sinking funds for things like annual HOA fees, taxes, car insurance. Checking in with each other and just doing a budget and getting out that calendar is going to be so beneficial for the two of you. So the steps themselves are not difficult. Starting them is definitely the hardest part. But once you start and your paycheck is not completely gone before the next one hits, you are going to be hooked. Now before we go, we have our personal mini challenge to get to for the week. If you are new to the channel, a personal mini challenge is where I give just a little nudge and it's something that will save us all money and we do it all together. Now, last week we did school supplies and we were either finding things that we already have before we go school shopping, asking for help if we were unable to buy all of the things or we were considering donating if we were not school shopping for anyone. Now, I donated to my local school board. When I contacted them, I was told that there are over 2,500 homeless students attending school in my county, and I was told what they needed. I was so happy to help and it felt great dropping off all of their supplies. And I loved hearing how so many of you are out there helping others. You've got your grandkids, your nieces and nephews. Some of you have a teacher or an entire class that you have adopted. And it is such a great thing to hear. Now this week, what's it going to be? And as I was sitting and thinking of what we were going to be doing this week, my youngest daughter happened to send me a screenshot of her online bank account. She was very proud of her total. I think that this was the most money that she's ever had in her account all at one time. So of course she was very proud of herself. And don't tell her this, but my very first thought was, oh my gosh, you could have so much more money if you weren't constantly spending it. Now she doesn't realize this, but I do. So here's what I want everybody to do this week. I want all of us to print out our bank statement for the month of July. No matter where you are in your journey, let's check in on ourselves. I want you to go through it and put a check mark next to anything you know you could have done without. 
Now we all have it, right? We've got the takeout. We've got the PayPal for our online purchases. We've got Amazon, more takeout. And all of those things are on my daughter's checking account. And when I tell her that I'm going to be taking a payment for a car repair that I have loaned her money for, she sends me memes like this one. And we all do it, right? She's no different from the rest of us. We wanna spend what we want to spend on, not what we have to spend on. Bills and car repairs, that's no fun. Buying things that we don't need at five below with our friends, fun. So let's check in with ourselves. I'll be doing mine too. And when we're all done with our little check marks, I want you to add everything up. And I bet that all of our numbers at the end are probably gonna surprise us. So let me know in the comments if you are going to do this check-in with yourself. Look at that spending for the month of July and put a number on it. Yikes. And guess what? When we're all done doing that personal mini challenge, we will all have done step one of the process that we just talked about. So you might as well keep going. Now, I also want to see some more questions in the comments. Go ahead and ask anything that you might be stuck on, anything you're not sure about, or something that you might need some clarification on. And don't hesitate to help each other out. In the meantime, here's that video I mentioned earlier. If you're behind on bills and you just don't know where to start, check this out.